All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Uh, sorry for all the videos today, but I, I'm kind of on a roll today, so I want to keep going. And really, I want to bring up a topic that not very many people are discussing here in America, but essentially is extremely important, not only uh, between China and Japan, but also the United States and, and the Asian region all together. Now, there are several articles I do want to go through. Uh, the, these articles are actually out of Asia itself. Uh, a few of them are of Tokyo, Japan, and one of them I believe is, is coming from the Chinese mouthpiece of their controlled media. Let me go ahead and go into the first article. Prime Minister to the interpretation of the Constitution change discussion of acceleration is visiting Yasukuni understanding. Of course it's gonna it's gonna read really weird because of the fact that it's translated. It was originally written in Japanese. The sixth it faces the New Year's pre press conference in Aisa May Prefecture. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expressed his recognition that should accelerate the discussion of constitutional amendments and constitutional interpretation and changes for the exercise acceptance of the right of collective self-defense. Is that China and South Korea both countries have rebounded a visit to the Yasukuni Shrine at the end of the year last year to em emphasize the idea that the resulting understanding to be the true meaning as well as to seek the understanding of the consumption tax like in April told a willingness to aim to achieve revenue growth of the nation and is allowed to turn around the business cycle. So right now what it sounds like is that Japan is getting ready to reform their constitution allowing them to be able to go to war uh, assumingly thinking that China is about to attack them or North Korea is about to attack them. So they're they're looking to find any way to any way as an excuse to go to war with with China now of course there's this major dispute that's happening I'll get into that with another article between China and Japan about the uh, about the islands down there and really we have two things that are going on in Japan right now we have the abenomics and really Japan is printing money similarly to what the Federal Reserve is doing but Japan is even more aggressive with their quantitative easing. It just they just keep printing, and then you got Fukushima. Fukushima essentially radiating the entire country, making that country very, very unhealthy to live in, a very high risk of cancer and all sorts of radioactive diseases, and 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 and, and people are experiencing all kinds of symptoms over there. So you have this desperation going on, in Japan. There's, on one hand, there's no economy in Japan, like there is no economy here in the United States. And on another hand, you also have Fukushima destroying the entire country. So what do you do if you're the government? You try to distract people and say, you know what, let's go ahead and pick a war or pick a fight with China. Let's let's do that. People, they'll keep people's minds away from Fukushima and, and the economy. So let me go ahead. I will link that article down below, but. Just make sure when you go and check it out to um, have it translated. Uh, this this other one is out of 47 News. This one is also out of Japan. Whole picture turned out nationwide dialogue meetings, campaign policy proposals, liberal Democrats to constitutional change. And I won't go into reading that because it's more of the same from what I read in the last article. China or Japan, I'm sorry, is looking to change their constitution. It would be similar to how the United States would change the constitution and say that the constitution allows for war. You know what I mean? The, the founding, in other words, they can say the founding fathers never said to stay out of wars. The founding fathers said to get into wars. And I'm not saying that, but they can make that argument to justify the unjustifiable wars. Is what I'm getting at. And th there's that article right there. Another article I, I want people to look into is a high-ranking Chinese says uh, ball in Japan's court. This is out of the J Japanese Times. Let me go ahead and read a little bit out of this one. The fourth highest-ranking member of the Chinese Communist Party, Yu Xingxiang, has expressed hope for improved ties with Japan, but said this depends on whether Tokyo will officially acknowledge that this dispute exists so the Senaku Senekaku Islands. 
I'm not sure if I said that correctly, so I do apologize for those who are watching this and, and them are, are Japanese, but um, really what's, what this article is mainly about is just you're talking about the islands that Japan and China are fighting over, and the, of course this article also goes on to say that um, by law these islands actually do belong to Japan. But my question is, and this is how the, the, the Japanese Times now, if by law the islands themselves are in Japanese territory, why is there a dispute for them, if that's the case? And this is just another thing where, for people who get into media and get into trying to understand what the media is trying to do to you, this is a perfect example of that, because like I said, this is coming out of the Japanese Times. This article is obviously biased. It's, it was written uh, for the Japanese people, by the Japanese people. Not saying Japanese people are bad, but what I'm saying is the, me the, the propaganda in the mainstream media is everywhere. It's not just included in the United States. It's, it's everywhere. So you have to look at the big picture. So there's, there's this fight with this island. Well, A, why is there a fight to begin with? If this article is saying that the islands are within Japanese territory, and B, why is there this desperate attempt to pick a fight with China over these islands? Is that because of what's going on in Fukushima, where they're expecting that to get so bad that they literally have to evacuate half the country, or even the entire country? So, reading behind the lines, this isn't good. <laughs> this does not look good for Japan right now, and I hate to say that because I think... The Japanese have a great culture, and and one day, uh, I would have loved to uh, visit Japan, you know, for a week, two weeks, a month, or maybe a year, just to uh, to experience the culture over there. I, I believe it's a fantastic culture. And I'm sorry if it looks like I'm looking away. I'm actually looking at the article. Um, I will go ahead and, and read a further down. Uh, Yomagaki quoted you as saying that if the government can't admit that there is a dispute and defer the issue, I think the current difficulties can be resolved soon, but that's not probably how it works for Japan. I will wait forever, you said, according to Yamaki, who told him instead that if we allow the current state to drag on tensions to escalate, and who knows what will happen, so that the two countries need to settle the situation as soon as possible. Uh, the J Japan's official position is that there exists no issue of territorial sovereignty to be resolved concerning the Sekigu Islands and since China did not begin claiming them until 1971 after an academic survey indicating the possibility of petroleum resources in, in the surrounding sea area. It's the first time in two months that a member of China's top political body, the Communist Party, Bhatti Burrow Standing Committee, has met with any Japanese political figure. All right. So there you go. Um, <laughs> there's, there's, the the war drums are absolutely heating up. Uh, so very, it'll be very interesting to see how this really plays out. It's very, very scary stuff. Uh, here's another one. This is out of China. Uh, China, Chinese Times, China Times. Beijing needs to play the long game. Uh, in Sino-Japanese relations. With the marking of the 100th anniversary of World War II and the 129th anniversary of the First Sino-Japanese War, 2014 has warned, has been warned by many in international media as a year with higher risk of war globally, with the Asia Pacific region likely to be the main battlefield. Potential sparks for military conflict in East Asia include North Korea nuclear weapons program, which people have been talking about for decades. Uh, Japan's challenge to establish order in East Asia, the military emergence of China and the U.S. stepping up its re rebalancing to East Asia. The recent behavior of Japanese Prime Minister Abe Shinsu, including his recent visit to the Yasu Kuni Shrine, which enshrines Jap Japan's war dead, including war criminals from World War II, and his pledge to restore a powerful Japan after watching a movie on kamikaze pilots, Japanese military aviators who carried out suicidal attacks during World War II, has provoked strong anti-Japanese sentiment in China. The latter's, latter's Ministry of Foreign Affairs dubbing Abe an unwelcome figure. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, it's like I said, it, it continues, the war drums continue to heat up as the economy continues to decline. We will continue to see more of this, and many people are predicting that we will have war between Japan and China, or we will possibly have war uh, between the United States and Syria. So look for that. Uh, of course, if you like this video, rate it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Please subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And I would also appreciate comments. You know, let me know how you feel about this. I, I think we need to start a dialogue here and try to sort of shift public opinion away from um, supporting the, these governments into supporting individual rights and the Bill of Rights, the Constitution, not just here in America, but also all, of, all over the world. So thank you for watching, thank you for listening, and remember, you are your own superstar. And let me try that again. You, you're, you are your own superstar. Take care and bye.